The dragonflies of southern Africa and their evolution provide an interesting indicator of paleoclimates in Namibia. The dragonflies are indicators of climate aridity because their life cycle is tied to standing and flowing water. Dragonflies mate, and then the females lay eggs in water. Once the eggs hatch, the larvae live for a time as aquatic predators. At some stage, the larva pupates, then climbs out of the water onto a stalk of vegetation or some other aerial platform to molt, fill its wings, and then fly off to become the next generation of aerial predators. In addition to reproducing in water, dragonflies are also very good dispersers. When suitable aquatic habitats are abundant, dragonflies can quickly inhabit a very large geographic range. Because of this good dispersal ability, even if the climate dries and aquatic habitats start to shrink and separate, dragonflies can still occupy a very large geographic range. Dispersal in this instance will sometimes be over dry land, but as long as distance between habitats is smaller than the dispersal distance, dragonflies will have no trouble occupying a range. If, however, the climate becomes dry enough so that the distance between suitable habitats is larger than the dispersal distance, dragonfly populations will become isolated, able to disperse only within their habitats, and no longer between them. At this point, populations become relic species, isolated from other populations of dragonflies. Each isolated population will then evolve independently of the other. Something like this has happened in shaping the evolution of the diverse dragonfly fauna of southern Africa. Currently, there are several endemic species of dragonfly found in the Namib, some of them in isolated wet areas, like the mountain springs of the Nocliffe Mountains. One such species, Aishna minuscula, is endemic to the winter rainfall regions of the Cape of Good Hope. Isolated populations of these dragonflies may also be found in the Nocliffe Mountains, nearly 1,500 kilometers to the north. Presumably, Aishna's range was wider in the past, made possible by overall wetter conditions in the region. As the climate became more arid, the winter rainfall region receded, and the South African and Namibian populations became isolated from one another. The dragonflies of the genus Sudagrion are widespread in the wetter savannas of southern Africa. These dragonflies also occur in isolated populations of the Nocliffe Mountains as well as in northern Namibia. Again, the range of these dragonflies was supposedly more widespread in wetter times, but as the region became more arid, the Sudagrion populations in the Nocliffe Mountains and northern Namibia became separated from the parent savanna populations. The effects of these climate changes can be seen from analyzing the diversification of one of the southern African dragonfly genera, Trithemus, over relatively recent history. This genus has diversified quite a bit since the late Miocene, roughly 12 million years ago, through the Pliocene, starting roughly 5 million years ago, up through the Pleistocene, beginning a little less than 2 million years ago, and then up to within a few hundred thousand years to the present. For most of this time, conditions in southern Africa were relatively dry, indicated here with yellow, with wetter periods, indicated in blue, occurring at the beginning of the Pliocene and again at the beginning of the Pleistocene. Currently, there are 38 species of Trithemus in southern Africa, some of them, like Styctica, being endemic relic species. One can reconstruct the history of the speciation of the genus through DNA analysis. From the late Miocene until the beginning of the Pliocene, the lineage proliferated at a fairly slow pace. As the climate became wetter at the beginning of the Pliocene, species proliferation increased a bit. When the climate dried again, there was a burst of proliferation, presumably reflecting the increasing isolation of populations. After the wet period at the beginning of the Pleistocene, the climate dried again, accompanied by another burst of species proliferation. These patterns of speciation suggest that the Namib has not been continuously dry, but rather has gone through alternating periods of relatively moist conditions, alternating with periods of aridity. Nothing in this suggests an ancient Namib desert. <laughs>